Yeah, we were supposed to start maybe half an hour ago. I don't... Oh, oh, here he is. Hey, look. I know I'm late, but hear me out. I just figured out a way I can save a ton of money every year, and maybe you'll appreciate this. Uh -huh. So, I spend a lot on preventative maintenance every year, but... I'm not talking about my truck, I'm talking about my teeth. Hmm. See, I figured out that it's the jaw which holds the bottom row of teeth that does all the chewing. See? So why even bother with maintenance with the top row? Yeah. Like the tractor of a heavy duty truck, it's the bottom row of teeth that's doing all the work. Uh -huh. The top row, like the trailer, just sits there getting a free ride and taking all the credit. I'll use half the toothpaste, half the floss, and my brush will last twice as long. I'll be rolling in the Benjamins, right? Uh, I don't know. Wrong! Guess maybe I'm saving a lot of money in the short term, but it won't pay off in the long term. Not to mention I'll have to listen to my dentist lecture me for hours. Ain't nobody got time for that. Mm-hmm. And the same idea can be applied to your trailer. Huh? Trailer. I don't know what you're saying, boss. Trailers. Oh, okay. Yeesh. Come on, give me a towel. Thanks. When it comes to good maintenance practices, tractors tend to get more attention than the trailers behind them do. And it makes sense, tractors are more often a part of a fleet's preventative maintenance program. While a trailer might be parked in a lot somewhere out there, the indispensable tractor is just naturally inspected more frequently. But if your trailers aren't on a solid preventative maintenance program, you're running the risk of wasting time and money on issues that could have been prevented. Keep in mind that trailers can be handled by different groups on even a daily basis, and they're more likely to sit for long periods of time, and both of these can lead to issues. Mileage on trailers also tends to not be tracked as closely due to these factors, and this can cause important maintenance intervals to be missed. Yes, legally, you're required to inspect your trailer suspension systems annually, but sometimes once a year isn't enough, so we've put together three trailer suspension maintenance tips you might want to consider a bit more often. But before we get into it, let me just start by saying that your specific trailer manufacturers as well as your suspension suppliers are your first line in suspension maintenance. Unfortunately, we don't have time to get into all the nitty gritty of every individual suspension system in this video. So before following any advice you might find on the internet, including right here, check with them for the proper repair procedures. So without further ado, tip number one is about leaf spring suspensions. It's fair to say that these types of suspension systems require less maintenance than air spring suspensions, but to think of it as set it and forget it equipment is a mistake. Fasteners and bushings are the most important items to check here. Loose fasteners that spend any time on the road could result in irreversible damage and a lot of money out of pocket. The U-bolts especially often loosen over time and when they do, allow the axle and the spring to move independently of one another instead of functioning as a united system. Tip number two is about air spring suspensions. For this style of suspension system, checking items like bushings, well, th it's still important, but it's not nearly as important as keeping up with trouble spots like the air spring, air valve, and shock absorber. This is because the air spring is constructed of a metal bead plate on top, the rubber bellows or air bladder in the middle, and the metal pedestal at the bottom. The rubber portion of the air spring is often referred to as the air bag, and the integrity of the exterior rubber can become compromised if it comes into contact with another object, excessive mechanical fatigue, high stress, or just through simple wear and tear. Back to the shocks, these should be visually inspected at least on a weekly basis to see if they are leaking, but use caution, the lower shock body could be very hot after the trailer has been in operation. Finally, tip number three is a bit more general, good for all types of suspensions, and that is not to forget the small stuff. For example, improper pivot bolt torque will lead to damage to adjacent components, so always ensure your pivot bolts are torqued to the manufacturer's specifications. This is why it is good practice to retorque the pivot connections every time you do a routine brake job or every 50,000 to 100,000 miles. In severe duty applications where brake jobs are performed more frequently, it is important to check torque more often. For more maintenance tips, log on to fleetequipmentmag.com. Thanks for watching.